Good morning, good morning, everybody. In this episode of Minecraft, Minecraft Survival, we'll be building up our tool stockpile even more and doing a cool new build. Do me a quick favor, go down below the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and finally, enjoy the episode. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the world record holding survival world, the Vine Farm. Look at it, I've done it. At the end of the last episode, I said I would fully replant this Vine Farm, and I've done it. Now, vines, they're not exactly on the material list today. We don't really need these things, but it's good to go. I just wanted to let you know. And then also down here, I've spread the glowberries. Look at them. They're literally glowing. <laughs> no name, you savage, sick beast. Your trial, what is it? Ha ha ha, you're still waiting. You will not have trial anytime soon at all. Savage, the sick beast, I can't believe what you did to yellow. Oh, poor yellow. The moment. And yellow. Yellow, erase this. No. How did that even happen? How did that even happen? Not my finest soldier. Yes, that moment. It haunts me to this very day. So, truthfully speaking, I meant to get into this project a little bit sooner, but it's not about when I get to the project, it's just the fact that I got to the project, right? Uh, what do you think? A demon stalker statue thing? Yeah, thanks for the input. Today is not only a day for champions, it's also a day for heroes. In this episode, we will finally, at long last, be building a monument for our finest soldier of all time and we're gonna build a brand new enchanted tool maybe mine for netherite but before we do that kelp farm how are you doing you beautiful wonderful wonderful kelp farm yeah yeah you're not doing too bad i think i need to up the simulation distance for today's episode i definitely need this thing to run because dried kelp i i need him i need it really soon so before i take on these projects it is customary to look around the base i walk around the base and i take a look at what i have and try and figure out where i could actually fit things in you know i want the base to come together pretty nicely i've come up with three potential locations for this project today project location number one could be out there at the sunrise just looking at me yellow forever every single morning it's a perfect start to a day location number two could be the world record beetroot farm but I don't know if putting a gigantic floating axolotl up in the sky above the thing is gonna, you know, kind of like hurt the rates of my farm. Do really deeply, sincerely care about that farm, so eh, maybe not. Location number three, it adds to the backdrop of basically every single shot in this series. And, uh, spoiler alert, that's where we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. One, one final thing, one final thing before I do the project. I also uh, continued expanding these farms in here. These vine farms are doing really, really good. I can walk in here and harvest them. Every single spot is planted. It's pretty sweet. So anyways, yellow was our finest axolotl. It's definitely not every day that you meet an axolotl with qualities and traits like yellow had. Yellow was a hero. Yellow was also a little bit self-obsessed. Like, out of everything in the entire world, Yellow had two favorite things. Taking on ocean monuments and clearing them out, and Yellow left us doing exactly what Yellow loved. So, that would be thing number one. Thing number two the Yellow absolutely loved was Yellow. The perfect way, probably the only way to pay tribute to our finest axolotl in the entire world is, of course, with a gigantic statue of that axolotl. So, wool. The wool farm is simply overproducing. It's really, really good. It's so good, I just can't handle it anymore. I need something to do with the wool. The tribute is quite possibly the perfect opportunity to start using up the wool. All I need to do to, to use up the wool is not build an auto sorter or anything like that. All I need to do is do more buildings with wool. More buildings with wool. Gigantic axolotl with wool. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's basically a no-brainer and it makes sense. But, this gigantic statue needs to be historically accurate. You see, uh, one of my biggest pet peeves of all time is when you have, like, these ancient statues and everything, and they're really cool. And then, you know, like, you go back in time and you meet the person, and they look nothing like the statue at all. Like, like not at all. Man, you wouldn't believe how Lincoln, like, <laughs> how, how Abe Lincoln actually looked. Horrendous. <laughs> This piece that we're working on needs to be historically accurate. So, I did a little bit of research. It's been a while since Yellow left us. I couldn't remember exactly what Yellow was looking like in their prime. So, I tried to do research. All of these images definitely kind of fit. But this one. This one in particular. This is very striking. Take this image and put it inside of a photo analyzer and count the pixels. We need to break it down block by block. I want this to be a one-to-one -one replica. So, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
10, that's a tall axolotl. The body of yellow was tall, but it was also kind of short, shorter than the head. The head should sit one block higher, so I think right here, something like this. This should pretty much be perfect. Now, when it comes to yellow's coloration, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, keep up. Yellow also had the most adorable looking orange things sticking out of the side of the face. Like, I mean, you had to be there to see these things. They were, they were just amazing, simply put. They kind of looked a little bit something like this. There was three on each side. What were these orange things for? Well, I couldn't ever actually get that information out of yellow. I'm not too sure. We'll call them face fingers. So this build, when it's done, is gonna look really, really cool. I think it's gonna add to the surrounding area of this world, like, a lot, which means the positioning needs to be, like, pretty much perfect. Before we get too far in the build, we should definitely take a break, jump down, go to the ground, and see if we like the placement of this thing. If I have to move it over, like, two blocks after I finish the entire thing, Mmm, well, that would actually be despicable, the worst thing in the world. We'll check it out from the aquarium. Yellow used to love to hang out here. Mmm, mmm, -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's perfect. I think it's sticking out of the mountain, like, enough. I think it's positioned in between these two peaks right there, like, pretty much perfectly. I think we're good. I think that means we can pretty much finish this thing in, which essentially means yellow wool. I need a little bit more yellow wool, and I basically need to fill the box in. Well, I finished this part of the axolotl up, I would like to talk about this world. So, one thing that I'm always thinking about in this world is uh, this concept of, like, abstract versus realism. So, this gigantic axolotl statue, mm, you might be able to guess which category it kind of fits into. Meanwhile, a build like we did in the last episode, this is definitely a lot more realistic. I'd like this world, when I'm done with it, to be kind of a combination of both. We have these really realistic, cool looking builds, but then also these builds that are a little bit more abstract. I feel like the abstract builds are not only really fun to do, but they stand out, and they really make the world look a lot more interesting. I also feel like in the previous series, for the most part, we went like 100% realistic style, which was fun and, and nice, but I think we can make it even better. With all of that being said though, I struggled with this build. I knew I wanted to set this build up, but I couldn't decide for like the longest time before the episode where I actually wanted to put this thing. I was kind of torn, I was partially worried as well that putting a gigantic floating axolotl statue, you know, off of the side of the mountain might kind of make things look a little bit more strange, but I think it's a vibe. One of the things that for some reason I've essentially like only now started to realize is a lot of my more realistic builds sometimes aren't exactly like the most colorful build. But I like color and I want color inside of my world. The perfect workaround for that is finding some kind of balance in between this abstract style that we're working on today and then the more realistic style that we've also done inside of this world. Uh, so to conclude my thesis and pretty much the build, I like gigantic statues. I think they add to the world. Thank you so much for coming to my TED Talk. Gigantic axolotl floating statue thing? Perfect. It's perfect. An exact recreation of yellow. Thick thighs and all. Look at that thing. It's wonderful. But I do still... I think it, like, needs a little bit more. It's maybe a little too abstract and, like, a little too lonely. Like, this thing is literally sitting up there on its own forever. Axolotl is unfortunately gone forever. I think we could maybe do, uh, do it a little bit better. Also, I mean, look at all this wool. The wool is overflowing. Well, well, it's not overflowing yet, but <laughs> trust me, it does overflow all the time, like, consistently. Uh, we have a lot of extra wool. We could definitely maybe even do a little bit better, for sure. There we go, that's a lot more like it, but it's still definitely missing something. And then there's one more thing. Ah, uh, yeah, that's it. That's way more like it. Three balloons, so of course, hold up the gigantic axolotl airship. Three more axolotl near yellow, so yellow is not lonely. It's perfect. Oh, yeah, and by the way, the lime axolotl. I will never forget the lime axolotl. Ever. It's perfect. It's wonderful. It's kind of realistic, and it makes sense. It's perfect. It's a nice addition to the world. Kind of an emotional moment, too, really. I'm sure yellow would be so proud at this moment. Anyways, it's enchanting time. So I've had this long, reoccurring issue inside of this world. That issue has to do with the Silk Touch pickaxe. More specifically, the Silk Touch pickaxe literally not existing anywhere. Aha, look at that. I forgot that I had those right here. This makes everything even easier.
We need a Silk Touch pickaxe. It is long overdue. And not only do we need a Silk Touch pickaxe, but that Silk Touch pickaxe needs to be efficiency 5. A Silk Touch pickaxe. Please work. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. That will get us to efficiency 5. That's fine. That's fine. A small consolation prize. I know how it goes in this world. It's okay. As to be expected. Uh, next up, Silk Touch. Right here. No. No. Stop. Enchanting table, I spit on you, continued harassment from you, uh, constantly inside of this world, on breaking three, give me silk touch, no, no, what is wrong with the enchanting table in 1.18, on breaking three, I don't want on breaking three, I don't need on breaking three, I need silk touch, well, here's the plan from this point out, uh, since I'm below level 30, I take this enchantment table, and continually roll this pickaxe over, until I see silk touch, I know what's in here. Sooner or later, we've got to have it. And then, after I find it right there. Nah, that would have been cool. Hey, wait a second. After I find Silk Touch. That's terrible. That's terrible. We can get that so much better. Sooner or later, it'll work. Eventually, I find Silk Touch. Easy. I swing over to the nether, level myself up a bunch. Then I come back over here and collect Silk Touch. Pure profits. Nice and... Uh, well, not exactly easily, but nice. Definitely nice. Is anybody else's enchantment table like this since 1.18, though? Like, seriously, all of the books are here. They're fine. Everything checks out. It should be perfect. And it's miserable. It's painful. It really hurts. And I hate it. Silk Touch. There it is, Silk Touch, the final, the final one before I had to make more blocks. Silk Touch, we've done it. We're champions. Well, yeah, off to the nether for me. That looks so cool. Nether double blaze farm, level grinding. This is going to take a little bit of time. We have a ways to go. Thanks, enchantment table. But this is quite possibly the best time of all time to check out today's meme of the day. And even better, there are two memes of the day today. Meme number one relates to our beautiful vine farm that we built in the last episode. The Tudor style, in my opinion, I think I nailed it. However, in the building's opinion, I guess, I guess not. Unless it's a scream of joy. I didn't consider that. Meme number two, truly a tragedy. But remember, like I said, don't worry about it. And wait, what's that? What's that? Oh no, a bonus meme. How could I have missed this? Bonus, bonus meme. meme. The world record for beaver farms is now ours. Over 40,000 beetroot. Yeah, that's beautiful. This is a wonderful meme, a wonderful screenshot, and a wonderful opportunity to remind you about my beet farm. Well, well, well. Uh, that's some fancy hat and fancy tool you have there, piglin. The job is done, and not only is it done, it's like done, done. I have a brand new helmet, which looks amazing. I have brand new 31 levels, which looks even more amazing. Silk Touch, my good friend, Silk Touch, it's time, me and you, reunited at last. It's been a long time since the last world. You're beautiful, and you're missing on Breaking 3, and I saw that earlier. You're, uh, you're average looking. You're average. Despicable, despicable. It should have been better. But it's fine, it's fine. I have the solution to all of the problems that we're having right now, and more. And to get those solutions, we go into the old and not improved storage building for paper, leather, extra food because I'm hungry, emeralds, they're coming with me. Villagers, 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 it's been so long. Aw, it's so nice to see you building your relationship deep in conversation. How are you doing, librarian? Olaraf, Olaraf, how are you? And then, mending villager. I named you. That's all that I can say, I named you. What is your name? Well, anyways, new trades, what do you have? You have book trade, you have a lantern trade. Worthless garbage. Well, with mending done, taken care of, all we need is two unbreaking two books. We combine those books, not a problem at all. We get unbreaking three, and then it's problem solved. Of course, you know how it goes though. Villagers, kind of a ripoff. We're gonna need more money. More money? Carrots. And you know what? I just realized it. Learned it on the beetroot farm thing. I uh, definitely should have been fortuning these. I. Uh, that's my bad. All day long, I look at carrots. I see carrots, and all that I think of is profits. Pure, easy, nice, delicious, smooth profits. Right here, this farmer that is actually maxed out now. Now that I take a look at it, do you have any? You do have new trades. So what does max level farmer have? Oh, 
Oh, Ooh, actually, <laughs> hold on. Hold on a minute. You tell me you've been taking my carrots and combining them with gold and fusing them together and getting golden carrots? Wow. Truly, they don't call you a master farmer for nothing. I see. But that'll do for today. Time to go next door. Olaf, Olaf, on breaking two, Olaf. Thank you so much. And 14 emeralds to spare left over. You're really the kindest. To be honest, I can't remember where the closest anvil is, so why not make a new one? The closest anvil will now forever be upstairs inside of this building. I feel like it makes sense. Unbreaking 2 plus Unbreaking 2 is only three levels. What a deal. There we go. Then Efficiency 4 plus this is only thir ooh, 13 levels. Eh, five levels. That's more like it. Five levels. There we go. Plus Mending. Easy. Plus this. Piece of cake. Plus Netherite. Back up to the mountain for us. Netherite pickaxe, the final netherite tool that we'll ever need in this entire world. As long as we keep everything safe, you're special. You need a name. So there's this album that I'm like absolutely, fully, wholeheartedly obsessed with ever since it dropped in the fall. I'm a big music man. Practically, I can name every single album, but this album, this is a different level. This is immaculate. It sets the vibe, sets the tone every single day. It's perfect. Perfect and nothing less. Don't get it twisted. I'm not naming this thing after a blue furry creature. No, definitely not. I'm a music connoisseur myself. There's a reference here in this pickaxe. I will not be able to explain it, but there is a reference. If you haven't experienced it, you haven't lived. And so with that, I think we've done it all. Netherite sword still needs a name. This pickaxe, that pickaxe, this thing, and that thing right there. Plus the bow, plus the trident. I think we've got it all covered. Minecraft Survival 34. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. If you haven't yet for some reason, now is your final chances of this video to absolutely annihilate the like button. If you don't do it today, you'll have to come back tomorrow, and yeah, it's just more efficient to do it today. What do you think about the mountain and how it's coming along? Let me know down below. Patron gang, a big shout out, GB fan 1984, Devins, Bill Geek, and A Johnson 6494. Thank you all so much for the support. Yellow, deeply, sincerely, I miss you. Goodbye, everyone.